Imagine your currency falling by 50%. Well, this actually happened. I'm gonna break down what's going on in the UK right now, and then we're going to look at why the US dollar is at the center of all of this. If you stay until the end, you're gonna get the full breakdown. Let's begin. First things first, Morgan Stanley says, dollar surge tends to end in crisis. So of course, when the US dollar rises, this affects everybody. It is a domino effect. And I'm gonna give you the full breakdown here today. We have to understand that while the US dollar can rise, it certainly has an impact on all other countries. The US dollar is the reserve currency of the world. The US dollar is the one that every country must buy in order to purchase a commodity, for instance. The US dollar's recent rally is creating an untenable situation for risk assets, including stocks. And in the past, this kind of dollar strength has led to some kind of financial or economic crisis. Quote, while hard to predict such events, the conditions are in place for one. Wilson sees an eventual low for the benchmark of the S&P 500 33,000 to 3,400, which would be later this year. But if we have so many different events taking place, if all of these things are up in the air, if inflation is still wild, then of course, that might not be the case. It might be still a rocky road into next year, particularly as we see uh, you know, in, in, you know, interest rates rising and all of this. Take a look here with what was said the British pound hit an all-time low against the dollar on Monday amid investor concerns that Britain's new economic plan will plummet UK finances. The Bank of England said it was watching financial markets very closely following sharp moves in asset prices. I'm going to break this down fully at the end, so if you're not fully aware of what's happening, stay for that. Look at this. The dollar, helped by sterling's decline in a fresh 20-year low for the euro, hit a two-decade high against the basket of six peer currencies. Always remember that when we're measuring something, it's really against another. So if you're looking at the UK, if you're looking at the US dollar, these things are always going to be measured against one another. Are we measuring against gold? No, they don't like to do that. It's always the country's currency versus another currency or a basket. In Japan, authorities reiterated that they stood ready to respond to speculative, speculative currency moves after they intervened last week to bolster the yen for the first time since 1998. So what's happening here is that Japan is just going full out. They are sitting on a lot of US dollar and perhaps they want to make use of all of that, $1.3 trillion to be exact. Speculators are betting that the UK pound, check this out, will slide to a level that was virtually unthinkable in recent decades, $1 or less. And it's basically there, by the way. It hit a low of 1.035 on Monday, the weakest on record. So you, my friends, in the UK, you've got your currency. You've held that currency in a savings account, let's say, since 2007. All the while, that currency has been losing value when you measure it in US dollar. And of course, you know, you might not think that that's what happens, but that's the way it goes. Because as stuff is moving into your country, as you're purchasing things, the US dollar has a very direct impact on it. Things become more expensive as a result. So while you don't see it directly, the indirect effects are there. Here we have it. After the pound tumbled, the weakest on record, options markets show traders expected to keep falling. Now, I don't know what's going to happen, but I simply wanted to note this, that in the financial markets, there's a lot of speculation taking place. So just keep that in mind. The pound plunged nearly 3%. The plunge extended Friday's sell-off after markets took fright at the British finance minister announcing the scrapping of the top rate of income tax and canceling a planned rise in corporate taxes on top of a hugely expensive plan to subsidize energy bills. So many things were happening. Obviously, some people only wanted to point out one thing or the other, but this is what's going on. They're trying to get the economy going. Now that presents itself with a big issue. Imagine the government comes in and says, we want to stimulate, we want to make things work again, but that had some repercussions. In the breakdown at the end, I'll give it to you. 
This is just a few charts that I want to show you and uh, just to give you an idea. This is U uh, UK debt. So when you look at this, we've never seen anything like this before, okay? This is going back from 2004 up until the present. And this pace at which this is increasing has never been seen, okay? So just like all the other bond markets around the world, while some were in the negative, this is for a 10 year, by the way. So you look at the 10 year UK gilt. So just imagine like a you know, 10 year bond in the, in the United States. This has absolutely surged throughout this period. In fact, the rate of change as you see at the bottom is unlike anything. Okay, so the pace at which it's, it's happening is truly extreme, to say the least. US dollar year over year change is at a level that usually leads to financial economic stress. We're already in that today. Think about it. We are already in stress today. We are already in an economy that is just being savagely beaten in, in many uh, you know, sense of the word. And yet, this is something that we really haven't seen the full extent of. So I'm wondering at what point does something simply pop? Look here. You could see for yourself right now, all these currencies over the last month, what has happened? They've weakened against that US dollar. If we see, I mean, just a few examples, the Norway, Britain, Chile, I mean, you just go through the list. The one at the very bottom, the Norway is literally, it's 9.1% it's in a month. Imagine you just lost 9% of your currency's value in a single month. Now these things fluctuate all the time and we wouldn't want to pay attention to that, but just, just look at the trend and where things have gone. Look at it compared to gold, okay? US dollar compared to gold, 1623. The levels which we had seen back in 2020. So this has been quite shocking to some. Some have said, why is this the case? You got inflation going off the charts and nothing has really happened here for gold. 1623 is not what some had hoped for. But what happens here is that when bonds become more attractive, suddenly gold doesn't. And I'm talking about from a you know, financial investor standpoint, because individuals previously would have said, I'll take gold because I know I'm going to hold that value, but I'm not going to hold a negative yielding bond because, you know, I'm, I know I'm going to lose value. At least with the gold, I can be sure it's going to be there tomorrow. So you see the balance. Now suddenly, hey, I can get 4%, I can get 3% on a quote unquote guaranteed investment. I'm going to put my money there instead. At the same time, we know that gold and silver are the two most manipulated assets there are. So it's just the way it goes. You could see here, China's currency has weakened tremendously over the last little while. I mean, look at this. It was at 6.3 earlier this year, now at 7 point, almost 7.2. So this is showing, uh, you know, huge fluctuations in all currencies, it seems. And then we have the commodities markets. Looking at the commodity index, you could see that this has weakened back to levels we haven't seen since the beginning of the year, okay? This is just a huge fluctuation that's happening right now. These are all updates that I wanted to show you, and I just wanted to finish off before we get into the breakdown with what could be done. These are just from this is from ING, and they're just basically explaining what could be done at this point. Okay, fiscal U turn for the UK. If they turn around and say, No, no, we're not going to do what we thought we were going to do, that's it. We, we could actually suspend quantitative tightening. Are they going to do that? I'm not so sure, but we will see emergency rate hike. They came out, they did a 50 basis point rate hike, and apparently the market did not like that. They said, hey, I thought you were going to take care of inflation. What's happening here? And then, of course, an actual intervention uh, for the uh, foreign exchange. So we'll see. Japan does it. You know, it's like a daily thing for Japan, but uh, it, at least that's the way it seems in the intervention levels uh, that they take part in. But this is just a full kind of idea around what is happening and what could be done. But I want to show you something right now that you must be aware of. 
All right, here in split screen mode, you can see the currency crisis. And what does this all mean? A strong US dollar creates an inflow of capital looking for higher returns. Too high would impact exports because suddenly the countries are gonna say, you know what, uh, I'm not gonna get those soybeans from you US, I'm gonna get them from Brazil instead. Their currency is weaker. So it is a balance that needs to take place. Strong US dollar also creates problems for all other countries as their currency weakens against it. Money leaves their country. For Japan, nobody wants to buy their debt. That's the way it goes. And that's why you have Japan itself being the one to buy that debt. I think it is uh, quite shocking to say the least when you look at how much intervention the Bank of Japan does on a regular basis. Problem for the UK, okay? Inflation is very high. Government proposes tax cuts. This would potentially increase the budget deficit. More stimulate, stimulation of the economy is being proposed as inflationary. So the things that they were trying to do here are being proposed as inflationary to the markets. And as a result, not so good. As a result, I say here, the government would have to increase interest rates even more. So all in all, they're saying we don't want any part of this. That's part of the reason why the currency has taken a nosedive here in recent days. This is very important and I wanted to highlight this for you right now today. This is a breakdown of what's going on. It's just high level. It's not fully comprehensive, but I believe that it will inform you in what could happen to your currency at any moment. So if you appreciated this, you got to subscribe to the channel right down there and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.